Greetings, greetings, greetings. Um, I think YouTube messed up with the links, uh, so I might need to send these out again. But uh, hello, everybody. How are you? You doing well? Takes a minute for these to kind of get settled in and all that jazz. Um, and uh, make sure that people get this. So new link. Uh, I must tweet out a uh, new live link. <laughs> um, hello, 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 hello. Um, yeah, sorry. The um, links messed up in YouTube, as they do sometimes. So I'm just kind of making sure everyone gets on board. Uh, hey, Mike, thank you very much. Um, thanks very much for the wishes. <laughs> Uh, who else do we have? Dangerous Jack, Zin, Justin T, how are you? Uh, Roberto Garza, hello buddy, how are you? Uh, Jay, how you doing? Thanks for all the birthday wishes. Uh, thanks for everyone for stopping by. Um, I have been chewing the bit uh, about this book because I've tried to stay away from it, which I have. I've had a brief peruse. Uh, thank you very much, Nils. Um, Thank you for the birthday wishes. Uh, everyone, you're awesome. And um, yeah, good to be here. Good to be in front of you all. <laughs> oh, we're getting thumbs up as well. So that's good. That's good. Um, one second there now. I just want to make sure that we get everything in here that we're supposed to. And um, yeah, I think we should be live. Can you all hear me okay? We're doing all right. Hey, Ken. Hey, Robert. How you doing? We're doing all right. <laughs> um, oh, do you know what? I think people are in the other live. Yeah, God, man. YouTube. YouTube. One second there. Uh, we, we'll kick off. I have, I have the live chat open here as well. Frank, how are you, pal? Oh, uh, one second there, folks. Uh, one second there. And um, we'll get everyone up and running. If you want to share the link out as well, that'd be great. Um, hey, Justin. Hey, Craig. Um, check out. I'm just chatting the other live stream chat because that's open. Um, check out the other live stream Bushk. people should start people should be uh joining there now i think um there we go uh yeah youtube messed up the links i had it all nice neatly planned and uh, for some reason youtube created a new uh live link so there you go um how's everybody merry christmas everybody you doing okay Who's hoping to get this awesome book in um, in their uh, Christmas? If you could fit it into your Christmas stocking, or maybe you see it under the tree. <laughs> Dave, thank you very much for the birthday wishes. I was reading your other chats in the other live stream for some reason. Um, yeah, YouTube shenanigans. YouTube shenanigans. Um, it's on Nils list. It's on Nils list. I got this book a while back, as I said, and I've really restrain myself from opening it up and diving into it hey jay how are you thanks for coming over to this live chat folks um i saw you chatting in the other one so thanks for uh keeping an eye on it and uh, joining over here and uh yeah so yeah i've been chewing the bit trying to wait to have a look at this book and this fine book by joe nazaro and um again with the awesome title of Star Trek, The Art of John Eves, one of my artistic heroes. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was tough. It was very tough. Um, and I know of a couple of images that are in this already. But um, let's crack into it. And folks, I got a beer this time. So uh, I know Nils went off in the last uh, live cast. To get a beer so i said I'd, I'd come prepared this time marley thank you very much 
Uh, my wife bought it on Black Friday, so I had to wait until now. Ken, yeah, I got it on Black Friday as well, or, you know, that weekend. See, Ireland has adopted Black Friday, but in typical fashion, it's like a week long. Um, and the deals are good, but they're not as good as, like, confining them into one day. But, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other. I just had to take some libation there because I was kind of drying up a little bit. But anyway, let's dive in. Awesome cover, by the way. Now, John um, did a post um, with a couple of... Oh, it would have been middle of December. Uh, he's doing up stickers, signing them um, for people as well. So do check out John's uh, Facebook page and um, check out his past posts because uh, it's a great way to get, like, a kind of signed by... And he's posting them out as well. It's fantastic. Just the one bottle. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let, let's open it up here. Still worth it. And uh, for it's 15. Yeah, it's a great price. It's it, it's a great price. Um, and look what we have here. We have Constitution concept art by the looks of it. And um, we'll get to that in, 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 a, in a more in more detail. But um, let's just see what we're greeted with here. So this is one of the newest books. I'll check out under the dust jacket. Do you know I haven't done that? Ooh, nice. Ooh, very cool. Um, so yeah, so this could be Constitution or it could be Early Enterprise um, concept art, maybe. Um, it's definitely familiar to me, Impulse. But I'm sure we'll see that a little bit later on anyway as well. So this is what's under the dust jacket. So good call out, Mike. Um, forward by Greg Jean and uh, Herman Zimmerman. The heavyweights. The heavyweights in production. So everyone here, like most people here are probably collectors of um, the Starship Collection. And when I say collectors of the Starship Collection, I'm talking about this stuff here. I'm going way, 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 way up there. So... If you're in it, um, I think you all know what the heavyweights of uh, production are. i got to recenter that now. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> um, get it together, man. Get it together. Sure, you're professional. Um, yeah, I saw Robert got his sign plate earlier uh, this week from John. Well, um, personalizing them all. What, what a gent. Uh, film designer in the house. Happy birthday. Well, thank you very much. John sends his best. Ah. Nice one. John actually thought the life cast was yesterday and I was chatting to him to a little bit. Um, if he if he can, he'd probably join in, if not. But listen, I know those guys are like, especially on Christmas, it's always hard to kind of dive into it anyway. Now, a bit of a background uh, before we kind of dive into this, right? Um, I came onto YouTube for uh, Star Trek Starships. But I was always into art beforehand, and um, I always loved the technology of Star Trek. And way before I ever did YouTube, I was always in awe of and tried to emulate John, um, John's artwork. And uh, to have a collection like this, and we've, we've seen a lot of it in um, Ben Robinson's uh, run through on the Star Trek Starships collection as well. But um, I've been waiting for a long time. To get my hands on this and we have our five chapters um to boldly go life before star trek um we have the movies we have the television series uh kelvin timeline and star trek discovery like john like many others that have worked and are working on star trek are prolific and you know they get a lot of crap um especially with the, with the way the internet's going but um you know, their, their their fingerprints and DNA are infused with everything that we love with uh, in um, in Star Trek. Now, this, let's check it out. So, I'm not going to be reading the text. We're kind of going to be more drooling over some of the fantastic imagery here as well. But I'm sure the forward by Greg Jean um, would be absolutely fantastic. And Herman Zimmerman in here as well. But the quality is absolutely phenomenal as well. So hopefully you guys will be able to see this um, in good enough quality. 
um but the stream will be going up afterwards the last time i did a stream i think it was in like 720 uh, p so it should be pretty decent enough to get you um a good run through here anyway as well and um, here we have the nx shuttle as well and oh tabuli go life before star trek so pop quiz what's this concept art from who's the first who's going to be the first to comment on it <laughs> Take a step back with Nefando. Yeah. Um, the motion picture. Yes. This is inside V'ger, I would assume. Um, classic TOS. Some fan art there. Not so much concept art, but exactly fan art. Um, here we have the Franklin. And one of my ultimate favorite ships ever. We have the Sovereign class. USS Enterprise NCC 178. O1E, the kind of return to the glorious, slender, long, you know, Excelsior esque um, design, you know, occupy those fantastic widescreen cinema displays as well. So, this is the section about before. So, we're going to get a lot of fan art here. So, Ease taught himself to paint using model paints. From a young age, he was fascinated with space exploration. So, again, we have. Uh, you know, they, they look like um, Battlestar Galactica, Vipers. Um, similar design to our modern day, um, what was that, No Man's Sky as well? I love the the space back art as well. Like, if, man, if I could do that when I was younger, oh, I'd be so proud. I'd be so proud of myself. And the thing with art is it's a skill. You know, you learn, you develop, you, you, you get new techniques here. Um, so here we have some, again, aircraft as well. So going from... Um, so this is Sky Harbor. So uh, what would this be? Probably like a DC uh, McDonnell Douglas, maybe uh, twin engined. Um, definitely. Oh, Boeing 737. Um, we even have the registration there. Um, we have Bell helicopters as well. Um, some cool kind of concept fan art up there as well. So you can see the origin of the skill. And uh, here we have the Valley Forge. Oh, how cool. You know, practice and painting. That's one skill that I never had, painting. Um, I'm, an o I'm an okay drawer. Um, I'm learning kind of digital art piece by piece at the moment. Um, but, I, oh, look at that. That's outstanding. Um, here we have a sketch of Star Trek II, Wrath of Khan. So we have the damage to the drive section. Um, USS Enterprise. So you can see there, like, all the elements are there, you know. Not perfect, but it's that kind of seed, you know, that interest shown. Um, I know one of John, he's always on about it, um, Space 1999, the Eagle, one of his favourite all-time sci-fi ships. And then we have uh, some Apollo Soyuz docking action there as well. Again, very skillfully done, you know, the atmospheric haze, so that boundary uh, going into space, you have the moon. Uh, fantastic star field there, like speckles of paint in varying sizes as well. So it's great to see that kind of, uh, you know, the, the lead up to it. And now there's a lot of text in there that I haven't gone through either. Um, but that's going to be very interesting through and through. Um, I studied John's techniques. I've learned heaps, especially with the technique of shading uh, and chrome. Exactly, yeah. You know, fan fantastic. See, you know, doing the line arts, um it doesn't have to be perfect when you're kind of blocking it out to get the rough shapes and then you can build and build and build and, and john is a fantastic photoshop artist but again you can get away well, not get away with but you know enhance images with the shading then the coloring shadows light and dark you know um doesn't need to be you know pen perfect but uh, like the aztec in here when you look at something like this i think uh now i may show my uh issues here but i think wasn't this the concept for the hollow ship um from insurrections maybe sometimes the blur <laughs> sometimes the blur for me um i'm trying to keep an eye on the chat as well Built a few of those kids uh, and then blew them up <laughs> building kits and then blowing them up hopefully you were uh, recording them in on a on a, what, what were those old camcorders? Um, eights film, something eights, eight millimeters or something like that anyway. So, Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. Greg Jean was always throwing a lot of opportunities my way. 
So again, getting in there. Super 8s, that's it. Super 8 film. So I remember John saying, telling a story. I um, had the pleasure of having him on the Nerd Escape uh, with my good old pal, um, Chris the Trek Collector. Do check out his channel. And um, he was saying like how you know he mailed off you know his artworks to you know uh, production houses and, and and films and stuff like that and he went out being like i think a set painter and uh, like his start was um i think on like a spielberg film and uh he was because he was from arizona you know he could stick the heat and that's kind of what got him in the door and you know getting to know people and you know getting that passion to kind of you know climb those steps and look and you know, be that person that can kind of take those opportunities and make the best of them and, uh, you know, learn, learn the skill. And I, like here we have uh, Klingon weapons and um, classic uh, like props as well as ships, as well as scenery art as well. Um, I know John is known a lot for his ships, but um, yeah, they are something he can help for sure. But um, like John, like even in the movies, like he was doing great prop work for like um, some weapons and uh, Vulcan um, uh, jewelry and stuff like that. So yeah, ships fantastic. You know, have been able to the, like having two, three enterprises under his under his name now. Um, Enterprise B, the E, and um, the Star Trek Discovery Enterprise as well. Happy days, but then having all this um, work body of work behind you as well. You know. Um, some fantastic uh, Galileo renders here as well. So, NCC one seven zero one A, very curvy, very cool. A lot of detail in there. The devil and the devil shall appear. Here we have the um, Enterprise B. So again, some of you may know a lot of the kind of you know the the work that goes into these uh, from the Eagle Moss magazines as well. But there's going to be a lot of real gold mines um, in here as well for sure. Um, here we have what looks like a kind of master systems display kind of breakdown of it, you know, pin perfect, almost kind of like architectural um, work there. And then you have that real iconic uh, Enterprise B look to it. Fantastic scene. Um, Excelsior class back on the big screen again. And then you can see some of the kind of concept arts coming through here, the additions that uh, he went through and then uh, some of the damage. Uh, reworks as well for the story through um, and again the rework to the Enterprise Bridge as well so we have some med labs there's a lot to go through here so I won't be kind of spending very very long on uh, some of the pages here's the prop work I was talking about as well so uh, Saren's gun time fire in which we burn that was one of the lines iconic that I always remember from that movie as well um, the Ar Armagosa Observatory. Man, I like, listen, I'm a big fan of the Enterprise E, but I wish the Galaxy got more um, more screen time. On the big screen, that is, because she looked gorgeous in cinematic form. Who agrees with me? Um, not to say, like, listen, the Enterprise E was a good, uh, was a good uh, consolation prize, but I wish... The D got a little bit more um, love on screen. Um, Armagosa. They always look these like things. Um, um, uh, I can't even talk. This uh, architecture here always reminds me of the end caps of a nacelle from TOS. Um, from some of the const uh, constitutions as well. Generation D bridge is my absolute favourite. The luxury liner that is the Enterprise D. Here we have stellar cartography as well. So again, you have some set design and um, some uh, prop work as well. I also thought the Armagosa always looked a little bit primitive. Well, the thing about the Armagosa is, you know, I really, like, there's a, there's, there's a lot of practical nature out of it. Like, you know, the, the ribbing and the visible uh, dish on it as well. Like, I know, obviously, like when you look at the deflector dish on the... Enterprise D as well, but you know, it's out there. It's an observatory. It doesn't have to be kind of very very Fancy, but I liked a lot of the exposed um, Nature of it as well But yeah, I get where you're coming from though. I do get where you're coming from um, 
the Armagosa. The stellar cartography, yeah, some good scenes there were showing the kind of change in the gravitational pull. First contact. Do you remember the Enterprise E just swooping down out of the nebula as well? Um, fantastic lines. Um, and obviously, like the Enterprise E was always in flux from movie to movie. You know, the, the weapons layout, some of the configurations changed on it as well. But the level of detail, you know, concept art here of the pylon assemblies. Look at the deflectors, skate pods, corridors. Like, everything has to be thought, you know. It's phenomenal. That's a really nice uh, configuration for the Enterprise. So what do we have here? Um, October 95. Man, it's making me feel old. <laughs> here we have some uh, potential deck layout as well. And the Borg. Borg Sphere. What's your favourite Borg ship? Let me know in the comments. Are you Tactical Cube? Are you TNG? Are you in the movies? Maybe you like the old uh, obelisk kind of styles. Or maybe you like lores. Um, what, what was that What was that ship called again? What was lores? Blah, 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 blah. Which birthday is it, is it for me? Uh, I'm the big 3-7 today. <laughs> Salute if anyone else is having a birthday. I am indeed a Christmas baby. <laughs> Probably a cube, epic but simple. Yeah, look look at that. Like I'm just looking at it here. Just the It's ominous, isn't it? Sometimes simplicity. Uh type three Borg Renegade ship. That's it. Yeah. Spot on. Spot on. Borg Queen. Looks very do you know I I liked the way the Borg Queen was done in the movies, very slender. Uh, but it was still quite grotesque at the same time. The diamond, yeah, the queen's ship. Ooh, here we go. We're into Vulcan land here. So Vulcan lander. Um, I'm waiting for this. I'm waiting for this for the Eagle Moss collection. Come on, come on. We need this. Um, and this ship has seen it's if if for the keen eyed among you, uh, you would have seen this in uh, Star Trek Discovery as well, which I think is a great nod. And one of my favourites, John shared this with me the last day on Facebook. I don't know if you saw it. I shared it with the um, the group. Here we have the return flight for the Phoenix. So we got inspiration from uh, Virgin Galactic with the feathering. Um, so the nacelles would flip uh, upon re-entry and then again retract and kind of land like uh, SpaceX as well. But look at that. Oh, man, the Phoenix. Mix in Magic Carpet Ride on its launch. Hung over. Uh, Troy. <laughs> oh man. Hung over is there from Cochrane as well. Yeah, that was a good movie. First contact rules. Oh, look. Look at this. Man. The Baku village. What's your honest thoughts of uh, Star Trek Insurrections? Who likes Star Trek Insurrections? Maybe you're a fan of the sauna. The plastic surgery, the plastic surgery um, uh, lovers. I liked it. You know, it was okay. Like, it, it's it's not the worst. Um, not the best. Uh, they tried to kind of put a lot of humor in there, as well. Um, but I uh, love to have full size copy of the Phoenix trajectory. Oh yeah, Phoenix trajectory would be awesome. I loved, uh, do you know, actually, when we got the Phoenix in the Discovery Collection, I can't remember who it was, but they modded one of the Phoenix. They got two of them, and, like, they they pulled off the pylons and just mounted in the um, the nacelles into it, and it just looked, oh, back into that kind of ballistic nature of it. Now, look at the level of detail in this. That is absolutely out freaking standing. Ian Fox. That's it. 100% it was Ian Fox. Yeah. Good man. You're like my parietal lobe. You're, you're just giving me those kicks in the right direction there. Um, here we have the main shuttle bay. Uh, what do we have here? So warp core. Ah, okay. So warp core uh, as well. Uh, oh, what do we have here? It says it up there. <laughs> warp core ejection sequence as well. 
like look like mm, I'm looking at this as a fan of Star Trek, but I'm looking at this as uh, someone who likes to draw uh, or attempt to draw. And I'm like, I'm just kind of like my jaws on the floor when you're just looking like the, the geometry involved with the shading and everything like that as well. Absolutely fantastic. Phoenix is one of the Ian bases I brought to John to sign. Oh, yes, that's right. I remember seeing that pick. Data Scout Ship. I actually like this Scout Ship. Uh, this is the one that um, Data was going rogue in, and uh, Worf and Picard went off uh, with uh, Gilbert and O'Sullivan. I'm not going to sing that song. If anyone wants to, in their own, in their own, uh, in their own way, yeah. Uh, a rare artist that doesn't use 3D. E yeah, you know, 3D has its place, and um, again, kind of morphing over into the Photoshop as well. Um, this is, I, I, I totally love the Sona ships. Um, they were like, I don't know. It's just with, with the coloring off them. Like when you're looking here and you have the red and, and the, 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 the gradients of silver as well. It's just kind of like some kind of funky, like, uh, I don't know, even kind of earth tech. Um, you know, like if, if. We went back to the kind of those labels like, you know, the West and the East and, and you know, the Cold War and stuff where, you know, different parts of humanity spl splintered off but didn't share technology, how something like this could kind of come to be. And, um, yeah, I just loved the kind of angles and stuff. Can't wait. Um, I, ne I need these ships in my life. The Solar Collector. Um, some Again, some intricate work here as well. And here we have some, oh, man, the face peeling back. Yeah gross and this ship was okay as well i did like it but um ruafu's ship but that one i thought was class for sure um what else do we have here hollow ship who prefers the concept to the hollow ship retro tech Ralph, thank you very much <laughs> thank you very much for the birthday wish um you know this that's a lot more practical, but um, I like I like the original I like the concept art for the the hollow ship to be honest with you, um, but yeah, <laughs> enough said of that. The Argo, never a fan of this vehicle being in Star Trek to be honest with you. Bit of a fun romp, much more of a fan of the ship itself. Um, ugh, it's. Well, kind of going back to going back to what Dave said about the Amargosa uh, being kind of like primitive. Um, talk about primitive when it comes to like this uh, Baja buggy <laughs> here as well. Um, colors. Remember the color? Yeah, the color of the Eagle Moss one. Kind of virgin on brown. Um, I would like this to kind of be more uh, silver. Uh, silver to kind of virgin and on the color scheme of the Enterprise-E. Um, but yeah, let's not talk off the Argo uh, land vehicle, for sure. Um, more Enterprise E. So again, the E went through an evolution. Here we have the aftermath of uh, the um, crash with the Narada. Not the Narada, God, the Scimitar. Getting my movies mixed up here. Captain's chair. The all-important captain's chair. Imagine. Imagine you're designing an Enterprise. And you have to design the bridges. Imagine the pressure that you put yourself under. I would freak out. He did. He did want to ride a Doom buggy. Imagine now being in such control of his new production. What? The, uh, it'd be interesting to see what the Picard show ends up like. Fingers crossed. You know, more track is always good tracks. But hopefully it's good track that everyone will dive into as well. Um, here you have a nice painting. You can see the kind of splodges off the windows here as well. Little doom buggies. Remember that band, Presidents of the United States of America? Uh, anyway, I digress. The Scimitar. The ship that is Ben Robinson's nightmare. <laughs> we need this in the collection as well. Uh, sooner rather than later. Um, phenomenal ship. Do you remember when they were like reading out the specifications of the ship? It was like, I know, yeah, but I want it now, though. I'm, I'm just being antsy. Um... What a beast. Like, absolute beast. Crazy. Yeah, I have no patience. 
I just I want it now. <laughs> like I want. I don't. I went in to see if I could get a space dock. I couldn't get one. Um, so I'm gonna have to wait. Um, like everyone else, unfortunately. Uh, Valdor. Oh yeah, it's gorgeous. That scene, you know, when the Valdor and the Enterprise Z was taken on the scimitar. I thought that was a pretty good scene. But really good. It's a really good Romulan ship. Uh, Scorpion. Attack fighters. Again, odd. Um, but again, a bit of a gimmick in the movie, for sure. Should be around September. Ah, cool. Yeah. And uh, Space Dock. Who doesn't like a Space Dock? And who doesn't like a Worker Bee as well? Who wants some concept? Do you know, Eagle Moss should do like a, a run you know, to kind of milk us out of our money again off like concept ships like they've done, you know, but ramp it up a bit. Like we've had the concept um, C, we had the concept uh, Voyager. So why not have some other crazy concepts as well? How's the advent calendar coming along? The last one, I got General Merrick. This is the Lego advent calendar, by the way. Uh, General Merrick came out today. So I'm expecting a snowman tomorrow uh, as you do bit of space 1999 in that yeah for sure i'm just looking at the kind of like like do you know like when, you, when you're sitting down at a blank page and you have to kind of set a scene you know um just having that kind of moonrise it just harks back to you know that all-important image from nasa and then you know you have this uh moon base in here as well just the framing, you know, you're telling a story. Uh, this is a beast. Um, ease design for a vast Kardashian shipyard. Uh, the installation is reminiscent of the show's main space station. Um, a less ambitious design was ultimately chosen for the series. The story of revenue neutrality. <laughs> uh, but this is all the galores. You probably have a few Keldons in there as well. Dominion. Um, look how look the size of this they're down there as well but that's cool that's definitely kick ass The Way of the Warrior remember that two episode Deep Space Nine kicking ass man seeing those torpedo volleys and those phaser arcs flying around the place I remember recording that on VHS way back when Oh, Geekology, hey, how you doing, guys? And everyone, thanks for the birthday wishes. You're all legendary. Um, Hopefully, I'm not missing out on the chat too much. But, uh, yeah, Way of the Warrior. Oh, man. I hope, I hope to get as much D Space 9 to HD for the documentary and just inspire um, that to come out. Um, And here we have some Bajoran and Cardassian sceneries as well. So, again, there was some story arcs there uh, throughout D Space Nine um, with the Prophets and you know going right into uh, the Power Eights wasn't it that was the the antithesis to the to the 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 Prophets the portals the wormhole uh, aliens um, but look at this like it's kind of stringed instrument down here like to kind of get into the mind of like the culture like, what did Mike Okuda say? Like, you know, Mike Okuda spent a lot of time, uh, Denise and Mike, on, like, the topography of aliens. And then a lot of the, the production staff would kind of take inspiration from that into designing some of the props and the ships and stuff like that as well. Thank you very much, Sarah Lee and Ken. Thank you very much. Glad you're here. Hopefully you're having a good Sunday. A Merry Christmas to everybody that's coming along here. Far Beyond the Stars cover. Oh, how cool. <laughs> how awesome. USA, uh, United States of America, it's Air Force, uh, DS-9. I love it. Who does that remind you? <laughs> Look at all this cool. Retro aliens. Bug eyes. That's not gonna that's not gonna do well for this guy. Back into spaceships. 
Cardassian Freighter. What is this one? Concept for the Cardassian Freighter featured in episode Return to Grace. Do you know the quality of the prints on this, I must say, is fantastic. And um, decent grain on the paper as well. Everything is of high gloss. And, um, you know, I think it's handling while well, I did wash my hands. I didn't want to get any kind of grease on this. Um, for fear I'd ruin it or something like that or smudge it. Uh, Dominions. Um, probably like a prisoner camp up here, is it? Internment camp. And uh, Klingon. Klingon tack on the Dominion base in episode once more into the breach. Yes. Man, I must get back into Deep Space Nine. I've been watching a lot of Babylon 5, actually. Um, which has stopped currently on Sky, but I'm sure it's going to come back in the new year. They stopped midway through season two. But anyway, I digress. Um, Micro Machine Space. What is this? DS9 Art Department Christmas Card. Man. Art Department Action Figure Collection Set. That looks like Rick Steinbeck. Uh, I think. Denise and Mike. That is so funny. <laughs> I dig it. That's cool. Star Trek The Next Generation and Voyager. Ooh. Did I rewatch a BB5 last month? Didn't get far into season five. Ah, oh, I need to get. Oh, German Trekkie, how you doing, buddy? Um, thanks for that. But uh, look at this. Look at this. Concept design created alongside Greg Jean for a Klingon Bird of Prey. Hmm. Interesting. It's like uh Kind of like taking some of the influence from uh, the Federation with a saucer. Very kind of retro nacelles and stuff like that as well. Almost kind of like uh, Flash Gordon down here. Um, again, some lovely detail work by John. Um, and here we have, uh, again, the Klingon, Klingon shuttle. It almost kind of looks like uh, some of the shuttles out of uh, First Contact. Uh, Federation technology, Klingon technology, kind of like a hybrid actually, yeah. Mm, there you go. There's that Klingon ship as well. Side profile. Star Trek Enterprise, uses Enterprise concept. Ooh. Interesting nacelle configuration here. So originally Herman Zimmerman wanted the Enterprise to go in a very different direction. The final design reverted to the traditional shape of the saucer, the main... Uh, focus so kind of like the Akira class um, but that's cool you have the kind of arrowhead we saw that in a few ships even in Discovery actually um, we see that kind of coming back into the forefront as well but see that's it there's a lot of these um, design briefs when you have like a production uh, manager art department and like the producers are going away in as well like I want this like famously like Brian Fuller you know don't want circular nacelles, you know? Um, but like, you know, you have like, we're talking about John Eves here, you know, he has a specific art style and a, and a tremendous skill, but you can see some of the influences from his earlier work coming through in his later work as well. And that's not a bad thing at all. And uh, yeah, here we have the concept for uh, the new enterprise. And then Doug came in and, um, you know, that kind of led into the, you know, what could have been the re the refit of the Enterprise later on um, before it was cancelled, unfortunately, or after it was cancelled as well. I really like the engineering room in Enterprise, actually. And here we have the shuttle bay as well. But, you know, I did watch Enterprise. Um, I like it more after a rewatch than I had before um, for a while, though. Sulaban. Who? I think it was Lore Reloaded did a thing on the Sulaban there not that long ago. I think I saw it pop up on YouTube. I think he was calling it the Lego of Star Trek, which I get completely. <laughs> Definitely, like, you know, connects. Um, but yeah, Sulaban. Interesting. Interesting Sulaban. I think the Zindi were the most um aliens for me and um, the vulcans ah vulcans annoyed me in enterprise um klingons are really good actually but i did i, I did like the the zindi arc 
to be honest with you. That was the sphere weapon underwater being constructed underwater. Uh, we've recently got this. Uh, we have that in the Eagle Moss collection. We have that. These are concepts now, mind you, but we've gotten the, the on screen versions of it. Uh, early Zindi bomber concept. There you have the sphere in the center of it as well. The Dead Star. Get some concept art for aliens. Alien ships. I think we have a lot of alien fans in here as well. Uh, Tholians. I know if Chris is watching the live stream, he's a big fan of Tholians. Maybe we'll get them in uh, Discovery. You never know. <laughs> John's Klingons. A lot of Klingon ships for um, Chris just <laughs> mind. <laughs> John did a lot of Klingon ships on Enterprise actually as well. So... Um, and I did a good job of them actually as well. I like John's addition of the kind of spars on the wing. You know, it's all, I always kind of likened it to like the Defiant, you know, where it was overpowered, overgunned, kind of like it was going to tear itself apart. And I felt like um, those Klingon designs lent, lent into that as well. And I liked uh, John's um, Warbird as well, actually. Um... But like he's gone through, like he's going through everything here: Klingons, Romulans, aliens, Vulcans, a lot of Vulcan ships. Like he basically kind of ran through the kind of the design philosophy for uh, a lot of the Vulcan ships as well, like the Dakir. Um, Carbon Creek is mentioned in here as well. And again, for simplicity for TV, you know that's why you, you know you have the different colors as well. Keeping an eye on the chat there. Enterprise season one to three were rated just right. The fourth season under the 24 guy. Uh, Manny Cato was way underrated. Like, I think the ratings were pretty, like, they were still pretty decent. Um, a lot of politics involved in it as well. Um, here we have some scenic art from uh, the Vulcan capital city. And Kelvin timeline. Everyone, um, everyone loves the Kelvin timeline. Isn't that right? Show some love. Show some smiley faces in chat if you like the Kelvin timeline. I kind of dig it. Here we have a ship under construction in a gravity environment. I couldn't believe they were bringing Star Trek back. <laughs> you know, it takes a while. Um, I always say the best uh, season in all of Star Trek Enterprise Season 4. Mm -hmm. So... The make it cool factor. Um, we recently got the shuttle pack from Eagle Moss. So, a uh, bit of controversy over this one. What, was, what did we get, guys? We got the 43, and it should have been really the 37. Isn't that right? 37 was the one that Kirk was born on. Um, coming out of the Kelvin. Literally coming out of the Kelvin. Um, but, you know, they kind of got to stretch their wings a little bit with the detail and stuff like that on the, on the shuttles, for sure. Um, interiors, you have the Warren shuttle, the transport, the medivac, and again, like when you look at them, some of them are kind of honouring, you know, the Galileo, um, with the kind of a hint into um, the motion picture and the, and the and the movie, not the motion picture, but like the movie series, um. Like Star Trek, uh, what would we be looking at here? Like three and four as well. Every, yeah, every one of those designs would have worked. Kobayashi Maru. So again, I have the Kobayashi Maru over here. Bip, 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 right there. And these ones are class, in my opinion. Um, that's what I would I would have liked to see the kind of really low down, um, hanging cargo bays and stuff like that. And then you have the Klingon ships. I actually don't have that ship in my collection. It's it is available, but ah, oh, I don't know. I don't know why I haven't got it actually. Um, here we have some of the props, and uh, yeah, she's having a tough <laughs> for sure. For sure, having a tough time. 
Uh, what do we have here? Charge Master. So again, kind of like a... Oh, look, Iowa. I like it. I'll dig it. Devil in the detail. Little chips and everything like that. Communicators. The brewery. But I think, you know, I know there was a lot of flack given about uh, the Enterprise's uh, engineering room and their core. But, um, yeah, it was, it was a departure from what we saw. But... It wasn't like I, I think it was still believable, you know, um, high energy particle creation. Um, but yeah, it was a brewery as well. But you know, that's that's clever. Um, not not actually, engine core wasn't the brewery, like the some of the more industrial parts of the ship was the Budweiser brewery, but the lab in California was used as the engineer, the engineering section, um, warp core, uh, Nibiru. So again, we have some cool concept art here, some of which I haven't seen before. And the weapons, which I spoke of earlier as well. Very cool, I like that. National Ignition Facility, spot on film designer. I couldn't think of it. I couldn't think of it. Uh, vengeance weapons. Of course, the Vengeance had to have different weapons, didn't they? I'm surprised they're so small. <laughs> Man, that ship was so oversized. It was funny. Uh, Klingon weapons. Like, again, just the, the thought and the the detail and skill that goes into it. And again, you know, it can sometimes be even harder, I would assume. I'm speaking off the top of my head here as well. Because these guys have to be kind of practically used by actors as well. And maybe they need to have kind of interactivity as well with lights and you know, uh, parts that come off and, and go on to it as well. They have to be, um, you know, really, really thought through, actually. Um, backward angles on the blade. On these guys. You know, yeah. I suppose, like, you know, if you're in, let's say you're, you're, you're gone into, like, a rage fight with a group of people, like, you're, you're going to have a lot of, kind of, forward swinging. But like if someone kind of runs up back to you, you know, instead of kind of wielding that big blade all the way around, just a quick flick back, you know, um, could inflict damage as well. But maybe, you know, kind of ceremonial. I don't know. I'm just thinking. Never know. <laughs> um, what do we have here? Modified Starfleet tricorders and um, medical devices. Uh the transporter device, oh yeah, that was the one that kind of been done to Kronos as well. The Hoover. And uh, Khan's Gatling gun. <laughs> I'm just keeping an eye on the chat there. Um, Star Trek Beyond. Still concept sketches of alien bugs. Again, alien weapons and artifacts. There's the Vulcan uh, uh, pendants and uh, instruments that I was talking about before. Um, what was that? What was that Vulcan weapon again called? It started with an L, didn't it? Um, Lerpa. Yeah, there we go. Lerpa, is it? Yeah, traditional Vulcan melee weapon, as well. Um, Starfleet weapons. Again, you have that kind of like modernized, but if, if you look back at the kind of lineage of even the motion pictures, um, the weapons, there's again, some of the anatomy, there weren't like huge departures, um, but obviously, you know, they have to be different and fit in with the aesthetics of the production. But um, look, like when you look at the concept art here, you know, they try their best to kind of honor, but develop and enhance and personalize for each production as well. Ice linear chips. I could look at these. Oh man, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have so much fun reading this. So far, so good. Franklin technology. Um, very to the Klingon stuff went wrong in disco. Uh, we should have seen more of it. Yeah, true. True, true, true. And you can see a lot of the look at the kind of the grill. 
kind of harken back a little bit to uh, TOS. Uses Franklin Medikit. Franklin, which I also have just up here. I've recently rejigged some of my uh, displays and the Vengeance. And there's our there's our little JJ run through as well. <laughs> Jayla staff. Again, things that you wouldn't pay too much attention to on screen, bar you know the action in it. But again, you know when you look at the kind of concept, some of the kind of detachable parts and the detailing in these as well. And then again, you know, you have the photo box that we saw only momentarily. And you have some of the old images in it as well. Very cool. And Discovery. Ooh. Now, this is interesting because this is the NCC uh, 1031, but it has that spiraling that we saw on the Glen. Um, so that's interesting. And uh, do you know what? I don't actually have, because I boxed up my Discovery ships um, earlier, so I don't actually have any of them out at the moment. Oh, folks, let's talk about the Enterprise. What does everyone think of the new Enterprise? And look, straight pylons. I like, I like, do you know what? I do dig the, the, the sweep back pylons as well, but man, I love the straight pylons. So... Dangerous Steak loves it. Marley loves it. Straight struts are retracted. Um, I, I, I would have kept the straight struts, and you know, if kind of kept the kind of sweatbacks for you know if ever there was a refit, if it was going to be used again. Um, second best Enterprise after the A for me. Ooh, high, high, um, high praise there from Jay. Love it, love Disco Enterprise as well. You know, I was so happy to see fans respond so well to the Enterprise. Um, because, yes, Discovery had a bit of a... Um, a bit of... Uh, listen, kind of justified. You like what you like, but I, I, I can understand why people had a love-hate relationship with it. Um, I would have preferred the original concept, of course, but the changes don't hurt it much at all. No. That's it. They don't hurt much either as well, but, um, you know, it just goes to show kind of like what goes through. Um, and I'm sure we'll see that a little bit later on as well. Uh, here we have the Discovery. So, again, there was a lot of talk about Ralph Macquarie's um, ship from um, the Titans. And then, again, you have the kind of modernized look to it. Again, circular nacelles. Uh, sweep down here as well. So the iterations. Um, I know there was talk of how many times Discovery was revised. Um, I like this one. I, I actually like I, I like the kind of lines off it. Um, again, the long nacelles. <laughs> the open. I think I think the the door of the shuttle bay here is permanently kind of like uh, broken. It's one of those things. Um, but I think, what was it? Uh, I think the raised uh, nacelles thing. Yeah, do you know, it's like, I, I just dig that little, just that little nip up here, I think was, was pretty awesome. You know? Um, huge, conf a huge change in the nacelles as well. Circular nacelles, kind of horizontal, uh, vertical. And then you have you have it as we know it today, the discovery. It's so growing me, like it, it is a grower, um, and I know some people still don't like it, but it, it is a grower for me. Uh, the Shenzhou, love the Shenzhou, love the uniqueness of having a ventrally uh, mounted uh, bridge section. Um, love the kind of hexagonal pattern here. They look like launchers up here as well, potentially. Uh, but these guys are cool. Although the design process for the Shenzhou is very smooth, Ease experimented with a variety of designs. Many of these concepts will be used for other Starfleets. Like, ugh, look at that one. And that has kind of like the raised nacelles from the Discovery as well. Such a beast. That's pretty cool as well, though. I like that. But, like, when you see, like, when, when you're trying to kind of get a shape, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Really kind of... 
like I say, like this would be kind of high art from me. Like very quick doodle from John, I'd say. <laughs> and the Shenzhou with its bold color scheme and the registry on the sides here as well, which is quite different. Love the Shenzhou. Glad we saw so much of it. And it stood, you know, it stood up to the Battle of the Binary as well. I don't know why they didn't salvage her. Anyway. Um, Starfleet ships. So, concepts for the Federation ships uh, without traditional saucers. So, mm, this is interesting. So, this looks like uh, the kind of Nimitz um, Europa. Again, front bridge, just like we saw on the Jaeger. USS Nimitz. That must have been the original name for it. And then it was called the Europa. Earhart concept design. Uh, the Artemis. I love the kind of sunken shuttles here as well for ease of uh, egress and ingress. Some really cool designs. That's it. I know the Klingons hung around for the six months as well, but, uh, you know, she went out with a bang. The Clark. That's the Clark, isn't it? That's coming out. I think some people have that already. Um, what do we have here? The Aldrin, which I think is now known as the Edison, but I stand to be corrected. That's cool. I like that one. Early concepts of the USS Jeffries. How cool is that? Uh, concepts for the Sioux um, and Malo, what is it? Malakowitzki, a uh, class ship. Uh, this ship was named after World War II US military division um, called the Sioux Code Talkers. Um, this class ship was named after Nicole Malakowski, the first female pilot to fly um, as part of the Thunderbirds. Ah, there we go. Hey, Scottish Tricky. How you doing? The Shran. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the Edison. The Edison is the, uh, the one with the big uh, saucer with everything just kind of underneath it as well. The underslung nacelles and the... I think there is like a drive section underneath it as well. Maybe we see that here. The Shepherd class, Alan Shepherd. That's cool. The Shepherd class was uh, named after American astronaut Alan Shepherd. Some great concepts here. That's the one that looks like the. It's it's been referred to as like you know a reversed um, Shenzhou, as well. Um, and you know I can see there's some elements to it there as well. But you're gonna have certain uh, DNA that carries over as well. But it looks great. Great ship. The Charon, the ISS Charon, not Sharon, Charon. <laughs> look at this. Look at look at the kind of outlandish, you know, like yacht uh, craziness of this ship. Um, I know some people are kind of calling it like a this skeletal form of um, the uh, oh, what's the what's the Doomsday, the Doomsday device. Um, but I like that. That's some crazy. Crazy stuff there. And then you have the spore. The spore core. As well. That's pretty cool too. Kind of, it's, It kind of reminds me out of something kind of like. I don't know like Fifth Element. Or some kind of. Awesome manga. Um, Sci-fi adventure as well. But it was cool though. We didn't get to see enough. But look. Look at this. Uh, Yamato from the top. Yeah, actually, yeah, you're right, yeah. Exactly. But look at the ridiculous scale here. Yeah, you have your kind of docking bays, kind of antennae or docking ports maybe along the spine, your bridge section. So poor old uh, Mir Lorca fell down from here. You have your wharf nacelles. Just a beast. Whale bones. Yeah. I always, it always reminded me of like a, a whale shark, you know, when the whale shark opened its jaws and just took in all the water, kind of flushing them out through its gills and just collecting all its food. And that's what it reminded me of. Looks like there's more docking bays down here as well. Just a colossal beast. And the USS Enterprise. Proceed? Exclamation mark. <laughs> um, so let's have a look at this. Look at the detail. 
again, we're talking about the internals of the Buzzard collectors here. Um, end caps of the nacelles. You have your drive section here. All the concepts had uh, straight nacelles, uh, nacelle pylons. And again, just, you know, your, your, your anatomy is there for the Enterprise. Production designer Todd, uh, was it Cherneski? Um, I'm, I'm making a brutal attempt at these names. Uh, provided notes on changing specific lines and proportions of the classic Enterprise profile. So the dish, you know, um, the impulse sections, the, the, rear, the rear lines of the nacelle uh, pylons. But just fantastic. So again, John worked with uh, Scott Schneider on the CG modeling of it as well. So the lower blade, what was it? The lower blade and the nacelles were inspired by the F-104 Starfighter. Um, Scott Schneider worked on the CG modeling of it. So again, taking the concepts, making them into a fully viable, epic, awesome 3D model. And here we see the Enterprise with the Discovery as well. Just some fantastic artwork there as well. God damn those creases. <laughs> I want the book to be bigger. Um, makes me wonder if it really is just showing up for two episodes. I'd say it has to be more. Um, not too long. Yeah, about three weeks. And uh, we will get to see the Enterprise for sure. Um, I never thought I would be lucky enough to work on Star Trek. And there's Greg, and there's John. <laughs> it's a cool book. It is a cool book. And I know I've only kind of whetted the appetites for you folks. Because, again, pictures do tell a thousand words. But, um, you know, do check out a lot of the text and uh, complimentary information that's gathered throughout this as well um what a legend of a designer and i wish there was more books like this for the other designers of my favorite sci-fi shows as well um oh yeah the orville is yeah yeah so i'm hoping for um a pike spin-off um, i'm looking forward to the animated series as well and uh, I'm very curious about Picard. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. This, it's, it's a good time to be... Yeah, Okuda, Sturmback, Drexler, Martin. Yeah, for sure, for sure. To name but a few. Um, man, I'd love to pick the brains of those people. I'd love to go for a pint with those. Because, like, listen... I know if I if I met like actors and actresses and stuff like that, I'd be like tongue tied anyway. But I've I've a lot more interest in talking to the people behind the screen more than anything, for sure. Um, what did I think? Else? See, that's it. Yeah, you, you do you appreciate the uh, rare more than anything else for sure. Um, meeting John at Destination uh, Star Trek was a highlight. Yeah, damn it. I got. I gotta make my way over to America. <laughs> I gotta. I gotta see if I can break onto the set of uh, Picard. <laughs> what are you doing, guys? Anyone need a need a an intern? <laughs> so anyway, um, let me change the view here to some starships. Uh, I finally got off. Uh, got out uh, my other um, Enterprise over here as well. So craft service, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I gotta get some. I gotta get some beer. I gotta get some beer. So, how's everybody else anyway? Anyone have any questions? While I'm here, I don't want to go on on camera. This is me. I am here. I am a real person, by the way. Um, Low Sternbeck's work. Uh, TMO Enterprise. TMP Enterprise. Romney Warbird. So, uh, yeah, Rick worked on the TMP Enterprise, but he wasn't the designer. Of uh, the TMP Enterprise, um, which is up here somewhere, and I do have actually some of the kind of Excel models down there with the uh, Galactica. Um, they're a bit kind of darkened at the moment, but uh, you can kind of see I had to move some of them a little bit there while I was uh, rejigging some of my lights. 
And there's my uh, my Vulcan salute, my pin thing for my uh, stress or lack thereof. And uh, actually, do you know what? I'm just imagining there. Oh, that's the Hot Wheels Enterprise. And that's almost to scale with the Eagle Moss Vengeance. <laughs> it was that ridiculous, wasn't it? Um, I'm going to knock stuff over here. So, that is, it was just like that, wasn't it? I never noticed that before. I'm, I'm, I'm only having a laugh here now, but that was about it. <laughs> How long have I been collecting a massive treasure trove? I started collecting the Star Trek starships. Uh, September 2013 uh, was when I started my uh, YouTube channel as well. I gotta put these back here before I uh, end up breaking stuff. And um, I don't have the biggest collection, but uh, I have most of the Eagle Moss ones for sure. Um, <laughs> but yeah, finally, finally moved these guys over here because I do like the JJ ships. Um, too much to jump. Components of the Vengeance. Uh, is that a figure? Uh, is that a figure? The robot from Lost in Space. No. Where are you looking? Um, I have. Oh no 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 no. Uh, that is a, a Pacific Rim. Gypsy. Gypsy danger, isn't it? Yeah, that was a... Uh, where did I get that out of? Loot Crate, I think it was. Yeah. You see it. Hidden with my Thunderbirds. And we have a Thunderbirds, some ships over there as well. And I have more... Some more ships just hiding up at the very, very top. I have uh, some Thunderbirds up there. And some Diamond Slicks as well. But anyway. Uh, where's my chat gone? There we go. Um, Happy New Year. Why didn't you start when it was first released? Um, well, I did start when it was first main released. Um, there was a test release off it that I didn't know about. Um, but I did start it pretty, pretty much on the button. Began as a subscriber. Um, I get most of my ships now from the news agents because shipping was just an absolute nightmare uh, for me. And, uh, yeah, kind of ended up working out pretty well, to be honest with you. Oh, thanks for all the birthday wishes. Great to spend my birthday with you guys. Um, but, yeah, there was an interesting quirk to the test release because they were manufactured elsewhere. So there's some slight variations uh, in some of the ships. Have a busted D. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank break update. Um, started collecting because... Oh, Mike started collecting because of me. I'm very sorry for the financial woes I put you through. <laughs> <laughs> and that uh, break update reminds me that I've been doing the Lego um, advent calendars every day. Posting them on Instagram and stuff like that as well. But it's, uh, it's been fun. It's been fun. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something very profound there. Um, but yeah, Lego is life. So Ian blamed Damien for all the aggro they get from customer service. <laughs> I am like the nicest reviewer. Uh, people always mock me for being too, too soft. But what I will say is, and I don't know if you guys back me up on this. Eagle Moss, I think they've done as, as good as they can on you know, the 140 ships, excluding all the other ones that they've done so far on their models. But their logistics department leaves a lot to be desired for. Um, Marks, yes, 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 yes. The Vesta, that's right. My, I am the most mild-mannered mild -mannered reviewer, um, for sure. <laughs> Send to him in chips. I don't know where I'd put them. And yes, I am not sponsored nor affiliated, but uh, I'm glad a lot of people can either live vicariously through me, because I know I live vicariously through a lot of unboxers um, as well. Start ships in Kerbal Space Program, just a thought. I have faith. Um, like, make them? 
in I, I kind of started to make an a Virgin Galactic um, uh, KSP model as well. Um, but I'm really into Star Citizen at the moment. Um, and that's kind of like the game, if it ever, if, if it'll ever come out, I don't know. But, um, yeah, I'm kind of digging, I'm digging that at the moment for sure. Uh, but I'm really digging the, uh, I'm going to swing back down here to it. The alien ships that, um, the non-Star Trek ships that Eagle must do. Um, we have, uh, Nostromos, we have the Battlestar Galactica ships as well. Um, they've proven very cool. Um, I know I have a lot of like just Star Trek ships. Um, that reminds me, I must do like a top ten. Uh, I used to do top tens and kind of bottom, bottom fives. Um, I think the Mail on Freighter is always going to be in the bottom five. The SS Poop. Um, I know Trek Yards are sponsored, yeah, but again. They have viewership as well, but, eh, you know, sometimes when you're not affiliated, like, you can kind of maybe trust what people say more. I don't know. Um, Angela, happy birthday from Oz. Oh, happy, happy days. Uh, Egan Moss, Australia. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It's even like, even Eagle Moss supplying Canada now. Uh, man, listen, I know we complain a lot about logistics over here. But we're very lucky in Europe and, uh, you know, America and stuff, uh, as opposed to some of the other places don't, that don't even get them. And they get, like, some of the prices I see on, um, uh, trackers of you, the EM ships are, like, audiovisual sequence. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like, again, it's first world problems, like, you know, oh, where's my ships? They're a couple of weeks late. But, you know, and, and listen, rightfully so, we get annoyed if they're a couple of weeks late. Uh, but I know some people just don't even get them at all. Um, and that's another story as well. Maybe I should. Um, hang on. Can I even... I don't know if I can flip. Can I flip it around here? Will it work? There it is. Hiya. How's everybody doing? Um, can you see me? Hello. That probably makes much, much more sense. See the big sleepy head in me, lads? Can you see it? But I'm having my beer. So, salute. <laughs> I should I should have done that a while ago. And uh, I have my little lavalier. Ooh, check it out. Um, that was a patch that I got from being a signed up member to Starfleet International. Um, which I made. I went to a Star Trek party and I, I'm not a big cosplayer. But I was like, I got it. I ran down to like a, sh a local clothes shop and I got like a, you know, a navy polo shirt and had my mother-in-law stitch that on. As well, because it just kind of worked out that way. But uh, cheers, everybody. Um, Stella tonight. Reassuringly expensive, but I got it on the cheap. Um, I don't drink that much, but because I'm 37, I've gone around the sun 37 times officially. Um, it's always it's always worth a celebration. Clink, clink, clink. <laughs> you can have bedhead if you want, of course. This is my um, Delta Quadrant um, Buffon um, that I'm talking about there. I don't know, I'm making it up. My disastrous soundproofing all fell off recently. I have to rejig it for sure. Um, but yeah, did I miss any questions there? I don't know if I missed any questions. Slauncha, cheers. Uh, what's cheers in other languages? Um, uh, I, 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 I should know this. Um, but anyway. Hmm. Any good movies? Who, I think Ready Player One came out. Cheers in English, yeah. Funny story. Well, not a funny story. Um, I have relations over in Boston. And um, I went to visit Cheers. And there's, there's like a, a big kind of shopping area. I think it's like Fenuel Park or something. And they have like a recreation of the Cheers bar. But we went to the building that was filmed but there's like a little bar underneath it. And I can't, oh, what age was I? Oh, I think I was around, oh, 18, 17, maybe 17. And I kept saying cheers when people gave me stuff in there. And they all started laughing. And I was like, I was so embarrassed. 
And um, I was just, once I said it, I couldn't stop saying it. And I was like, I'm in cheers, saying cheers. And they're like, oh, you're so good. I was like, oh, it was mortification. But um, on a side note, when I was over there, because um, I, I like to play guitar and stuff, and there was a guitar shop that I was like saying to my dad, I was like, we got to go there. We, we, we got to go to that guitar shop. And um, it was Chinese New Year, and it was freaking freezing. And we got stopped by a cop going, where are you going, guys? And we're like, oh, we just, we just want to go down here. And he's like, that's Chinese New Year. You're crazy. And we're like, oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. And it was a good crack. Like. But we got to the shop and there was a sign up. After 105 years of service, we'd like to thank everyone. But we've closed like three days before I got there. I was so good at it. But anyway. Yeah, that's the ramblings in my mind anyway. Um, questions? Anyway, couldn't resist saying 20 years makes me feel it. <laughs> yeah. It's 20 years ago. Oh, man. That was 20 years ago. Ah. <laughs> the Irish are born with drinking hands well when I was teething my granny used to rub whiskey on my gums um, but god damn it 20 years ago I was 17 listen aging is a privilege that certain uh, people don't get to have so I will never be cranky about getting old so cheers for getting older <laughs> Sorry, not sorry. Uh, I'm 33, so 20 years ago. Uh, <laughs> he's in my vocab. I remember your disco theme guitar cover uh, shout out on Trek Movie. Oh man, yeah. Um, that's a good theme. That's a good theme song. I thought it was like it was pretty good to um, uh, do a little do a little guitar show off that. But that was cool. Um, Trek Movie. Trek Movie are a good bunch of peeps. Um, Aaron, aka Geek Filter, um, does a lot for them as well, and that's kind of like how I got connected. Uh, they they did some of my fan art as well. Um, I did some cool stuff with Dave. Dave is a fantastic modeler, and Dave runs the Hero Collector Facebook group. Uh, drop in the link if you can. I'm sure everyone is on that anyway, and like some Mike and Nils. Uh, mod over there among uh, among a few others as well so you know that's one of the kind of the best things about trek um and about this collection is meeting like-minded people because i'm i come from the west of ireland and like i work from home hence i i, I have so many kind of computer monitors so like my social circle is not big uh, i'm going to put it out there it's not big um and to be able to kind of connect with people who are into science, space, design, um, it just it fires my neurons, and it's great. Like, and I'm, I'm sometimes I'm not very active because I am literally like the dog in up, you know, easily distracted. Where I kind of focus on one thing, and then everything else just kind of drifts away. But then I come back around again. But one thing that I've been quite regular at has been the Eagle Moss collection, and um, you know, getting to meet people like you guys as well as like i think the first person i ever interviewed like taught like like i've never interviewed anyone but like um was um who who did i interview first um but I, you know i got to meet like not to meet got to talk to like doug drexler johnny scott schneider uh gareth wang um Sean Hargreaves was the first person I interviewed. And it was like, just, just before Beyond came out, I was like, did you, did you design that enterprise? Oh, yeah, I did. Would you like to come onto YouTube and talk to me about it? He's like, yeah, sure. I'm like, first Nerd Escape. <laughs> it was like the first, it was like one of the first five Nerd Escapes. Oh, so cool though. But um, yeah, I, lo I love my ships, but I love meeting people as well. Uh, look at me, I'm getting all soft and emotional in my old age. <laughs> Um, any other questions? Anyone want to talk about anything while I'm here? I know we're, I think I've been live for like an hour and something now, but um, you know, I'm, I'm good to go. I, I can talk for a while longer anyway. Squirrel, yeah. <laughs> um, Frank, um, I'm covering the screen there. My dad's 70, I think of him. Um, he's age depressed me if my brother is 10 years older than me, so lucky uh, to work. So lucky to work from home, yeah. Listen. Um, I count myself very privileged, for sure. 
and, and to be able to like get ships like uh, the Eagle Moss um, as often as I could. Now I don't get everything from Eagle Moss because uh, number one, um, I don't know where I'd put it all. And you know, it is pricey. Um, it adds up. But you know, I get a little bit from YouTube that kind of goes towards it anyway as well. So it's, 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 it gets there. Favorite Star Trek episode and why? Ooh, that's a tough one. Favorite Star Trek episode and why? Um, I have to think about that and come back to you. <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't know. Um, like TNG was always my favorite um, series, but it's going to be something in there anyway. Um, but I swing back. Uh, what are your hopes for? And like to see in Picard series. Um, well, I liked the kind of, you know, the, the really deep, but not too deep kind of story arcs that Picard did. And like, I think that's what we're going to have to look at. And not so much TNG, but what were the Picard episodes like? Um, but also post Borg um, I think it's going to be very story driven and I don't think it'll be I, I think it'll be very different to Trek um, but it's I don't know really it's, it's, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting ride to say the least anyway um, hey from Scotland oh hey Cameron how are you uh, Merry Christmas everybody a lot of my ships are in boxes still as well, yeah. Uh, you hoping to maybe see an Enterprise E pop up in the Picard series? Like, I feel we need to see more of uh, the E. Um, well, it's going to be 20 years. What rank will Picard? Will Picard be even serving? Um, like, you know, he's been through a lot. It'd be interesting. You know, we could be seeing, like, Picard in Florida or something. Um, shuffleboarding. Uh, I am expecting Tapestry uh, writ large. What was that? Am I, am I reading that out of context? Finally got Elite Dangerous. Uh, well, it's hard. Uh, it took me six hours to figure out to do one mission. Elite Dangerous, yeah. Elite Dangerous is is, is a tough game. Um, but it's a fun game. Uh, the, whole universe, the whole galaxy is at your disposal. <laughs> Just watched Voyager eleven fifty nine episode. Uh, love uh, the episode. See, uh, seems Christmas. Oh yeah, yeah. Do you know I liked? Um, there's a lot of D S nine episodes that I like as well, though. Uh, e refit. Well, we're not going to see Galaxy X anyway for sure. Um, but I think yeah, I think we will see an E somewhere, even a model. <laughs> um, will we see the F from Star Trek Online? Or will that be reckoned? Um, Rook tired or more being forced out. See, you know, again, well, like post-traumatic stress, which Picard most likely has, um, like an idle, an idle mind can, you know, be susceptible to deterioration as well. So would he stay in service to kind of keep distracted a little bit? Um, or will he be like on the vineyard, um, kind of dealing with everything or do you know, will it be that he is retired, but there's something, there's a new threat that, you know, his specific skill set is required for, you know, ambassador Picard, will he have that disease that degenerate, the, the ge degenerative disease that we saw in all good things? Um, how far, how, how long ago? When was all good, uh, all good things? How far was that set in the future again? Um, was that twenty years? I can't remember. What does everyone think? Actually, here's a question. Uh, actually, let me just go. Let's scroll through there. And Trigger is going to the short twenty fifth anniversary and Echo and Stream. Uh, wonder if they followed the books, comics, Borg invade. I don't know. There's no reason this impaired will develop. Uh, yeah. Iridonic, that's it, the Iridonic Syndrome, 18 years, um, but not sure. So it's in and around that time. So we saw him 
with the neurodegenerative uh, disease on the vineyard. So, you know, and again, like he has the loss of his family in generations as well. And then Picard, you know, the Borg being captive. Do you remember that episode with the lights? Um, man, it's tough. Do you ever see that? Um, do you ever read the book uh, Red Shirts by, um, was it John Scalzi? Um, it's, yeah, it's kind of like, it'd be interesting. Read that book. It's a good book. Um, try, try and keep on that. Oh, happy pre-birthday, Scottish Turkey. Another Capricorn. Mm, will you be married to Crusher? And divorced? You never know. <laughs> Borgs a Pluto weather. Uh, ignore the books, yeah. So tell me, here's the question. Star Trek Discovery is back in January. We have the Red Angel. What's everyone's theories on the Red Angel? Talk to me. I'm thinking, there was that scene where they're in, was it East Fork Presbyterian Church? There was like, it was a, a video capture and you could see like, was it 20th, 21st century military uniforms and Starfleet or at least Captain Pike knows off the Red Angels, like when, when there's something going down, these guys generally appear after these signals. You know, um, are we thinking like the angel of death um, or what significance? What, what, what's the red angels, folks? Talk to me. You're smart people. What are you thinking? Season two, Star Trek Discovery. Come on, blow me away. <laughs> and we have a look at the chat. Oh, Cameron's birthday is coming up as well. Um... Oh yeah, I think a lot of Star Trek online will be will, will be retcon for sure. Um, seven series seven seven series seven angels. Doesn't Burnham say something like uh, they had a calming effect on her? Uh, and yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Rogue Iconian. See, you know, there's this kind of galactic threat. You know, do they have a calming effect? Kind of like um, you know, like a pilot fish. Is it a pilot fish? You know the way they have that light. Just to kind of like bring in the prey and then they pounce. You know, is that why the Red Angel kind of subdues people? Red Angels have shaped our religion. Yeah, so the Angel of Death, Azrael. Um there's a lot there's a lot of that. Um so and they did say like, you know, it'd be religion uh, and science based. Lantern fish, pilot fish. What am I talking about? Yeah. See, this is why, you know, you're, I told you you're smart. Um, so, like, mm, do they kind of, like, appear when there's, like, tragedies happening and they just, like, scoop people up? Do you remember those, um, remember that story arc where they were capturing the souls? Um, remember uh, Mark Twain was in it? And they had like, uh, they, they would go after people dying and stuff like that. What were the name of those aliens? Um, well, I can't think of it. They were kind of living outside of dimensions. Whoopi Goldberg was in it. Um, Doctor Who. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that. Um, that's right. The, the, when Pakistan was breaking off from India. Um, What's everyone think of the Doctor Who series? I'm not... Oh, I know I'm going off on tangent here. I haven't got into it fully. Um, I think there's too many companions. The Vorlons. Or the Vorlons? Maybe. I don't know. Um, I think aliens pretending to be gods and using other aliens with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think the first post kind of got me bogged down saying BS. Yeah, I'm going to watch it in New Year's, but I don't know. I just can't, I can't sink my teeth into it. Um, too many kinds of Jodie needs to ramp up. Like, I think Jodie's doing a good job, but I think she's kind of, well, I don't think she is. I think the writing has her leaning too much on the quirky side of it. Um, kind of like, 
kind kind of like the doctor is just kind of falling into the solution. But you know, let me see. Um, oh, David Tennant. I like David Tennant. Um, Peter Capaldi was pretty good, and um, do you know I I have liked most of the seasons to be honest with you. Um, I started watching the Captain Jack episodes again. Um, I say started, I only watched the first one, was it? Um, Empty Child, I think it was. Remember the one with the, the gas masks in London, the Blitz? Um, where the, the, the creepy child was like, Mommy, are you my mommy? But uh, there we go. See, we're on, we're on the evolution conversation here. <laughs> Bradley Walsh, yeah, well, yeah, Bradley Walsh, I think, is, is one of the best. Like, do you know, like, all right, here, here's the thing about the new season. Do you remember the very first episode? They, they made this big thing about your man's dyspraxia. You know, how he had no coordination. That guy is doing amazing things and has never shown any signs or symptoms of dyspraxia since episode one. But, like, why was it such a big thing, like, I'm learning to cycle? Oh, you know, he can't coordinate himself very well. But, yeah, you, you know, you're, you're able to use alien technology just like that and, you know, seem very calm. Um in crazy situations as well but anyway um do, 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 do. yeah and he's good on the chase as well matt smith is not the doctor he sucked me in matt smith yeah he was good oh i hate that one uh really like the first episode though see see that's it like the first episode was like oh yeah but then they all became companions it was like what you know, and what what did they call your man? Um, Tim Shaw. I thought that was hilarious. Like <laughs> Tim Shaw, Sheffield Steel, and all that jazz. But anyway, we'll see what uh, New Year's Day brings us. But um, yeah, so twenty nineteen, we have we've the Orville coming, we have Discovery, um, Picard will begin shooting. Um, there'll be development on the animated series as well and i need to get back into babylon 5 um i need to start scrolling my text there um uh, matt smith um matt smith is your doctor yeah 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 and the orville right before 2019 yeah like i get people's issues with the orville but um i kind of switch off my brain and just kind of have a bit of a giggle at it um there, but there were some good episodes I loved the episode with the two-dimensional space um, in it. Just something, you know, kind of nice, light-hearted sci-fi shenanigans. Anyway. Um, but anyway, I think Carl, yeah, Carl will be the end of the year. Um, take it easy, Ace. Thanks for joining. I'm going to head off now myself as well. Or will start tonight. In America, yeah. God damn it. Just send it, send it around to everybody. You know, put it on Amazon or Netflix or something and get signed up. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there, folks. Uh, we've been chatting for an hour and a half. Um, thanks for everything. And um, I hope to get my Enterprise E, not Enterprise E, I hope to get my Disco Enterprise maybe on Monday um, over here in Ireland. We'll see. If not, it'll be after, but we'll see. Anyway, folks, I will talk to you later. Thanks for stopping by and uh, celebrating birthday and the art of Johnny's and everything. And I will see you folks in the next video. So uh, take it easy and we'll talk to you later on, all right? Good luck and bu bu boy. I, I can't even remember how to end this freaking thing. I used to. I'm going to flip it over here and we're going to... Uh, there we go. Now I know what to do. So take it easy and have a good one, all right? Bye-bye.